Welcome to Finance and Excel video number 16. Hey, if you want to download this workbook or the PDFs, click on the link directly below the video and you can download the workbook uh, and PDF for chapter 3. Hey, we got to talk about liquidity ratios. Liquidity, what's liquidity? How quickly something can be converted to cash. Can they cover their short-term bills? Right, we talked about working capital. Uh, working capital is current assets minus current li liabilities. But here's a ratio. We talked about a little bit in the last video, but more in the context of learning ratios. Here we want to talk about uh, liquidity ratios, in particular the current asset. Uh, commonly used in debt contracts, where you'll see it, the current asset has to be uh, a certain amount, or uh, perhaps they have to pay some of their debt early. CA, current assets, divided by current liabilities. For every $1 of current liability, how many dollars of current assets are there for us to potentially use that to pay? Now, above, when we do this division, above 1 is generally good, right? If it was 10 divided by 10, it's 1, which means we have 10 current assets for every 10 current liabilities. If it's 20 divided by 10, that's 2. That means you have more current assets, right? So that's pretty good. Below 1 is generally not good. Now. It's, it depends, as always. If um, it's a small business, maybe they need more. If it's a large business, or the business has lots of access to borrowing funds, then maybe below one is uh, OK, right? Now, notice it says big corps, it's OK. In the financial crisis, um, let's see, Bear Stearns, at the height of it, had uh, one divided, well, I don't know what it was, but their debt, they had 40 times as much debt as equity. So I don't know what their current ratio was, but it was well below one, right? So sometimes, in that case, it turned out to be not good, but sometimes businesses can get away with it. Usually common sense above one is good. There's a bunch of um, interpretations of current asset. Um, and I have, uh, we'll do a bunch of examples, but here are some notes if you want to look through them. They have my little uh, scribbles about what happens if certain things, like if you incur long term debt or if you pay off short term creditors. We're actually going to look at these examples in Excel, so you can read that uh, if you want later. So, current ratio, what about the quick ratio or acid test? Same thing except for we subtract out inventory. Why would we subtract out inventory? Well, you know, this takes a little bit, a little while to sell, right? Or maybe it'd be, it might be hard to sell, or it's obsolete. So people take it out, and this is like more immediate measure of short-term liquidity. Uh, still, another ratio, the cash ratio. We just take cash divided by current li liabilities. That means if you had to pay it all off now, could you do it? Now let's go over to Excel and look at an example. Here's our Whole Foods Market example, 2005 and 6 data. Let's go ahead and calculate first for 2005 our current ratio. Equals, this is 2005, so we got our cash, accounts receivable, inventory, other, and then there's the total. So that divided by our current liabilities right there. Okay, so 1.6. We have 1.6 in current assets for every current liabilities. That's looking pretty good. Now let's do for the next year, all right? Here's our total current assets divided by our total current liabilities. Okay, so it went down a bit. Uh, maybe they're selling inventory more, maybe they are used up some of their cash. As we saw uh, from the balance sheet, they actually bought a bunch of assets, so that makes sense that it went down. Now let's take out the inventory. Now equals, and we're going to open parentheses because we need to do subtraction before we do division. So I'm going to say total current assets. This is for, I'm actually supposed to be doing 2006 here, so I'm going to go boop. That minus the inventory, a lot of inventory for Whole Foods divided by total current liabilities right there. That was 2006. Now let's do 2005. I kind of did that in reverse. We take our total current assets minus our inventory and divide by 
total current liabilities. So again, that makes sense too. It went down if they're using cash to buy assets. Um, it makes sense that it went down. Now let's do the cash ra ratio. Here's all of our cash for 2005. We'll divide it by our total current liabilities. Now this is, if we had to pay everything else right now, we have 82.5 cents in cash for every one dollar of liability. That's not so bad. And then here for 2006, what happened? It, I bet you it went down. Let's see, so cash is right there, divided by total current liabilities. Oh, so it went down a lot, right? So cash went down a lot in relation to our current liabilities. All right, those are liquidity, how quick, how, you know, bankers are going to look, how, if they, if Whole Foods can pay interest, suppliers are going to look, can they pay us, pay their bills, etc. Now, let's go talk about what accountants and what the people inside the firm can do to one measure, current ratio. Since this is in a lot of contracts, uh, people know how to do a lot of things or tricks right before the balance sheet is prepared to maybe make their current ratio look better. Now I'm going to click on the sheet current ratio and you can use this sheet to uh, go ahead and try these calculations for yourself. I'm just going to go through the end result. Now we want to look at a bunch of situations. We want to say what happens to current ratio when we purchase inventory. Of course the answer is it depends, and then we'll look at three depends. I will say uh, what happens when a supplier is paid, when short-term uh, bank loans are paid, and a bunch of other examples. And again, this is what can, th th in general, this is what happens to the ratio when you do this. So if you're a manager and it's important to have a certain current ratio, then you need to be aware of what these actions do to our, our ratio. All right, what if we purchase inventory? Well, of course, it depends. It will not change if you pay cash. And the reason why is current assets, right? If you pay a dollar cash, it's going to go right back into inventory a dollar. They're both current assets, so nothing's going to change. We add um, some inventory, we decrease some cash we go from a ratio of 2 to 2. Now, if you pay on credit, there's two possibilities. If your current ratio is greater than 1, it's going to go down. Let's see how. We start at 4. Current assets. We bought inventory, so it goes up by 1, so we end up with 5. Current liabilities. AP goes up by 1, so it's 3. And 5 divided by 3 is 1.67, which means it'll go down. But notice we started above 1. If your current ratio is below 1, so right now you have 0.8333 of current assets for every $1 of current liability. So it's less than 1. Now look what happens. We start at 5, let's say. Current assets, we add inventory of 1, so we get 6. Current liabilities, were at 6. We add 1 to that, we get 7. Well, 5 divided by 6 is 0.83. 6 divided by 7 is 0.85. It goes up. All right, next example. Uh, oh, suppliers paid. Well, we're going to pay some cash. So current assets are going to go down. And current liability is going to go down, right? So we're paying a supplier. Not a long-term debt. We'll talk about that one later. Well, again, it depends. Depends on if current ratio is greater than 1. So greater than 1, we, we have a current ratio of 2, right? So we start at current assets of 1. Cash goes down by 1, we get 3. Current liabilities are 2. We pay off a dollar of that. We go down to 3. So what's 3 divided by 1? It's 3. So it went up. So um, if you, you know, yeah, that's what happens. Now, the opposite happens if we start at our current ratio below 1. So we start at 5, cash goes down by 1, we get 4. Current liability is 6. Mm, we paid it off, so it goes down to 5. 4 divided by 5 is 0.8. So it actually will go down. So that's what a supplier is paid. Now, short-term bank loan. 
Well, if it's short term, then it's classified as current liability and simply what's going to happen is your cash goes down by a dollar if you pay off. You start at four, you go to three. Current liability, oh, that uh, can be a loan, goes down, so we end up with one. So it goes from two to three. Ah, but the same thing just as a moment ago, if we're starting off less than one, we had five, we paid off a dollar of cash, went down to four, we had six current liabilities, uh, which included that loan, it went down by one, we go 2.8. Now, long-term debt, I'm going to scroll down here, long-term debt paid early. Now, it's important that it's paid early because any long-term debt, is on the balance sheet. But if any of it is due within the next year, it gets moved to current liabilities. So it's only when it's, uh, you know, you pay something early. Here's what happens, right? Cash will go down by a dollar. So we start at four, we go to three. So we pay off. Uh, but why is the cash going down? Oh, because we paid off some debt. But look at this. The current liability stays the same. That didn't change, it was the long-term debt. So we go from four to three, two to two, no change. We get a uh, ratio of 1.5. So the, the current ratio will go down when you pay off long-term debt early. Now, what about if whoop, AR is paid? Well, it's kind of a wash, right? Because current assets, we have accounts receivable and cash. So cash goes up by a buck but AR goes down, so there's no change. What about inventory sold at cost? Now, usually you don't sell inventory at cost, right? But if you do, what happens? Well, again, it's a wash. Cash goes up by a dollar, inventory goes down. Remember, inventory is recorded uh, usually at what you bought it for, right? So in this case, inventory down, exactly what we paid. Uh, cash in, so there's no change. But if we sell inventory at a profit, oh, we like that. Look at this. Cash goes up by two, we sold it for two bucks. Inventory goes down by one dollar. So we go from four, we actually have to add, just to show you the formula, we take the four. Oh yeah, we add the cash by uh, up by two, which is to six. Subtract one, we get five. Current liability is the same, so it goes up from two to two point five. Finally, um, if companies are in trouble, sometimes they're they're right on the cusp. They're not supposed to have their current ratio go down, and they're about to publish their balance sheet. Well, what do they do? They issue long-term debt to pay off short-term debt. So really what they're doing is they go out and get, let's say they owe 10,000 in, in current liabilities. They go out and take a long-term loan and pay off. So really they're transferring long-term debt or short-term debt and putting it into the long-term category. So what happens here? Well, current assets don't change at all. Even though the cash comes in from the loan, it immediately goes off to pay the current liability. So it goes from four to four. Ah, but if you pay off the CL, current liability, let's say one buck, it goes from two to one, it dramatically increases. So sometimes people will do this trick right before the balance sheet is supposed to be created in order to raise up their current ratio. Perhaps they were in, in you know, about to violate some uh, contract or something like that. All right, that's um, a little bit about current ratio. In our next video, we'll come back and do turnover <laughs> ratios. A lot of really cool uh, kind of create creative ratios uh, that get interesting information from financial statements. All right, see you next video.